Round three. <laughs> Devil damn it. <laughs> so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what I like to call the redemption arc for me playing Resident Evil for you guys. And you may be wondering why the two screens were playing the DS port Deadly Silence. Yay. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Or as I like to call it, Reds. <laughs> yeah. If you put it all together, that's exactly what it says. But uh, yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, you may remember way back when I did a look at of the original DualShock Director's Cut of Resident Evil for the PS1, complete with the Ass Symphony and whatnot, and I suck royal at it. And I still kind of suck at Resident Evil, that's why I'm going to do input this little cheat and start classic mode with its, with, with its lit in green. Basically, it's like you're on tutorial beginner difficulty, but it works. Please. Which, mm, one, which, which one to use? Well, James is pansy, so obviously Jill. No, so, okay, th there's a whole thing to that. Continue, though. I will say this much. I did do, a, like, a proper, you know, run of this version not that long ago in preparation for this, because, you know, naturally we're going to do more of this series going on, but I do want to show off the, the original games alongside the remakes, and I figured out of all of us, I'd be the, the most willing to do so, however bad at it I may be. So, I did try to do an Honest to God run. I somehow was able to do it, despite a couple of game overs. And I'm only, I'm only doing it this way, just for the sake of convenience. And I'm not really doing this to prove anything. Also, hi, director of the game. Oh, but yeah, no. But primarily, yeah, no, you're not here. Nobody is, like, demanding, at least not that I'm aware of, nobody's demanding that, like, you have to prove yourself for this. It's more so Special Tactical and Rescue Services, that's it. But, you know, you're mainly here... You're primarily here to like you want you want to pay tribute and appreciate the legacy that this game has. Like it's it is clearly one of the like most in most cases if you think horror and gaming, this is one of like the top three that come like franchises that come to mind. And I and mean, no like better that. time than now considering uh, this this year marks Resident Evil's twenty fifth anniversary. And also, huh. we're getting Resident Evil eight this year. However, also known as Village. Oh yeah, that game. Among other things. With eight, no wait, nine foot tall vamp lady. Honestly, I feel like it would have been funnier if it was eight because RE8. Oh, you, okay. <laughs> RE8. Yeah. What'd you find? Uh oh. A dog bump it. Oh god, what big teeth you have! It's just a dog. They're, they're not even as. Was it this or was it two where they really started. No, 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 I think it was this one where they really started getting into the weird zombie designs. Oh, hello, it's a hand! <gasps> Holding a gun. That, that right there's a cute and little puppy. Unleash the Muppet. So, uh, in addition to subtitles and other little quality of life uh, features, Joseph! oh no, he's gone. To be uh, fair, uh, there... she did say that with more conviction than Wonder Woman to Superman. Kalel, no. But in any case, oh yeah. By the we... way, uh, we are so no. terribly sorry that we're presenting this game as if it were being played on a Sega CD. But it's but it Which just kind of comes with the okay. it comes with the territory to have subtitles. I would have I would have greatly appreciated if we were somehow able to play Ill Bleed. I would I would accept Ill Bleed looking like this if we had subtitles for those damn cutscenes. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. that would be but anyway, nice. But yeah. But in any case, why are we playing the DS port of this game? Uh, for a number of reasons. First of all. Uh, the top screen has the map displayed whenever during gameplay, and that, honestly, is a blessing for me. And I guess we get more to that once we actually get to the gameplay itself. Meanwhile, let's beat our cast. Age 23. When Chris had red hair because his name was Redfield, and then the latter games forgot that. Barry Burton, age 90. <laughs> Age look at the lower left. It, 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 he does not look, look at the lower left. He looks like he's forty. It, 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 it oh, looks like you. she. That there looks like she's ten, and that says sixty. I'm look when it's compressed like that, the text gets so muddled in the lower left there. Buy it up, pretty. Resident Evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <what's that> <laughs> anyway, the they the have name. escaped into the mansion. Chris, I compel you to do the monkey with me. <laughs> Why did you do the monkey with me? I thought you were my best friend. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought I was Chris's best friend. Or are you? So somehow, all the way out here in the middle of nowhere where our crash landing happens, just so happens to be an elaborate And Yeah, as I was saying before, the top, the top screen having the map at all times does help with these pre-rendered, um, you know, environments. Ooh. You know, 
What this, is it? Look at me. First off, this voice acting, mwah, it's glorious. We can talk about that. But uh, another thing I'm going to say is, man, this mansion looks so elaborate. It looks like a bunch of, it looks like the people who built this mansion also built a mansion in Louisiana that has, that is also very complex. By the way, that is canonical. The people who built this mansion also built the mansion in Seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, same, okay. State, yep, same state and everything. Yep. So, now I thought to do it all the way to Louisiana, like build a basement in Louisiana, is beyond me. So let's back up and talk about this, James and Matt. But for, for first, James, <laughs> uh, what is so? There are two for the anyone for anyone who has never for some reason what? seen this game. And what, what do we have here, Barry? No, <gasps> not V8. Wait, is V8 usually green? Chill. Oscar the Grouch. <gasps> not Oscar. Hope this is not Chris's blood. Barry, it's green. <laughs> but no, oh. here, here's the thing. Oddly enough, in Deadly sil Silence, uh, default-wise, the blood is green. This makes no sense because of two reasons. One, you can change the color back to red, and two, yes, this is a DS game, but it's the very first M-rated DS game. Oh. Joe, put that thing back where you found it. Also help me. Put that thing back um, where it came from. Also help me. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> well, I was trying to finish it. Sorry. Okay, hey, you got so, it. You got it. Uh, so there are also, uh, as we go into our first optional kind of encounter, we can see how this works. Is James? So there are two scenarios, and oh. what is our plan for these two scenarios? Hey, buddy, we're looking for a friends oh. would you oh. oh well first of all we're not gonna be able to save that guy hello good sir do you have the times hmm? is it dinner time and we're just like okay i'm just gonna but uh you sir? keep doing you buddy boy wow this, he really is undead i mean look at him oh okay. I, I guess so he's forgotten the difference between east and west barry but for some reason, he knows how to open doors. <gasps> but this is why we came in here, so that we could save ammo, because Barry will help us today. Yep. Yeah, no, Barry's an absolute bro during Angel's scenario, so for the, for the most part, make the most of his, you know, goodwill towards you while you can. As the Executive Survival Zombie Survival Guidebook states, when in doubt, grab the nearest Barry. Let's report this to Wesker. And make sure that St. Barry also ha comes pre-equipped with a cult python on his holster. What, really? Oh, also, I wish we could have that. Continue, Matt. Also, the person we saw the zombie nomming on was Kenneth J. Sullivan, part of Star's Bravo team. And by the way, get get used to it, a lot of fucking black cops seem to die in this series. That is unfortunate. You can't understand. Yeah. It's from a different era. No, I'm not even oh, joking. It I reminds you of the it reminds, it reminds you of that freaking John Tron clip. The uh, Wesker, you out here? Uh, no, we can't leave the mansion because ooh. of that. Ah. Ew! My Wesker, what big teeth you have? That one didn't age quite so well. Yeah. No, I'm not even joking. By the way, like, if I feel so sorry if you are a black cop in a Resident Evil game because you have the life expectancy of dead on arrival. Even in seven. Find an yeah. angel. Anywho, we found nothing. What can we do, Barry? Why is it that for some reason I could totally have imagined Barry just looking underneath that table where the typewriter was just to see if Wesker was there? Wesker? Chris? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Uncle Uncle Fungus? Hold on, people. It's time for one of the greatest lines in gaming. Which, I mean, there's some, there's already subtitles. I think we can get a, get, we can get away with a little leeway. But, but it's the way he says it. Let's see. Okay. And? And? Here's a lockpick. Oh, thanks. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. The master. Of unlocking. Yay! Do -do -do. And don't you forget it, Barry. Maybe I'll I guess so. I still think my favorite callback in the series is in Revelations 2, where literally Barry uses a fucking giant boulder to open a gate and says, Ha! Who's the master of unlocking now? That's a thing. Not only that, apparently he still brings up the Jill sandwich thing on occasion, and it's real, and it, it, it is, and his daughter is outright embarrassed by it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
I, I, okay, I, I'm thinking of a different character. Never mind. Yeah, no, Barry, Barry here has two daughters. Okay. Yep. And one of them's a playable character in one of the later Resident Evil games. Mm-hmm. Okay. Epic revelations. Two. So, and then, yeah, uh, and then, yeah, once we go into this next area, uh, we can start getting into the game proper, which is a clunky tank controlled me- No, it's not a mess, but the tank controls will take some getting used to, even on the DS. Yeah, no, um, Resident Evil, like Resident Evil, no matter which version of the game, I mean, the remake is better about it, but, but regardless, it definitely does carry its own antiquities for its era. And it's really no different here. But we have puzzles. To be fair, yes. uh, the tank controls in the original uh, 1996 version and the DS aren't that bad. If you think about the fact that we don't have to deal with any circle pads or uh, dual shock uh, or, or, or anything like that, we're using a D-pad. So just go left, right, forward, back. That's Congratulations, true. Congratulations, you got the tank controls now. And as James is showing off here, this is exactly why having the map just always on hand is very convenient. Sir, would you mind getting out of my way? <laughs> I said out, good sir. Not in my ankle! Oh! <laughs> Jeez. Well, uh, that, just, that was almost like slapstick when I just saw the app. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Rude. That zombie certainly got ahead of himself. So, so what you just saw right there is one of the perks of the DS version. They treat the combat knife like the one Leon has in Resident Evil 4, where you have it on your person at all times. You will not find it in your inventory, so don't bother looking. And all you have to do is press the L button to bring it out and start swinging with it, assuming you want to conserve some ammo. And if you're and if you're daring enough in the first place. Also, Matt did that the same reason Jill did that. It was just for kicks. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Yeah! Yay! Well, I had to wait a bit because James was talking, but yeah, I guess I did it. Hey, it ain't uh, works! Uh-oh, here, here uh -huh. comes the pun patrol. By the way, as you saw... Bad doggy. As you saw earlier, uh, we got the ink ribbons. Ink ribbons are our saves in the game, and they are very prominent in the first three Yeah, games. I came back. Uh, do it again, I wasn't looking. Thank you. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go! Yeah, um, the, they, they were they were considerate. Uh, oh, they, okay. they kept in mind I was gonna go up and get a drink of water. Oh, uh, why we had to kill that one? He just wanted to play Ring Around the Rosie, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but he has no time. pockets Continue. for his posies. Oh, uh, yeah, that's fair. You know, it's I remember back. I remember how much I made myself look like an idiot in front of these doggies. Huh? Yeah, but no. Um, look at remember. But yeah. Huh. Uh, so the ink ribbons there. Those are saves, and in the first three games we had limited saves. And that was the ink ribbons. So you find a save room, find a typewriter, use the ink ribbon to save the game. Uh, four dozen, one, nope. two, and three. In four, five, and six, they got rid of that. It was just regular save points, uh, checkpoints, stuff like that. And in seven, they did an in-between thing. In seven, on easy and normal, there are checkpoints. But on Madhouse, the hardest difficulty, instead of ink ribbons, they have cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be I'll be honest in that I don't really mind that the later games more or less ditch the whole concept of limited saves just for the sake of getting a move on. Though, at the for, if you know what you're doing in these games, you'll have you'll have just enough ink ribbons to you know see yourself throughout the entire. Like honestly, if you're daring enough, you could probably beat the game without using a single one. Oh yeah, yeah no, and actually, fun fact: there are some games that have achievements for that. Mm -hmm. They reward you handsomely for uh, for surviving what some would consider the impossible, like yours truly. So, I guess for the sake of, you know, because it's your tradition at this point, we always got to have that one part where we talk about, like, people's thoughts and opinions on the franchise. Uh, Jordan, what are your thoughts and opinions on this franchise? I mean, in general, I'm not the biggest fan of Resident Evil, but from the experience that I've had with it, I've seen four thanks to my brother, and... I will agree with everyone, and I will agree with everyone else that it's pretty good. I gotta give credit where it's due. And the oh, last one that I saw, both from my brother and from Logan and Matt when they played it together, is the fifth one. Right. And that's pretty much all I know about it. I can't get out of here. By the way, even though James is showing off Deadly Silence, we are going to be doing the remakes as well. Hey, don't touch there on that touch screen, James. Sorry. What else do I do? I'm stuck in here. Fair. A yellow light to the punch there, Jilly. 
Oh, yeah. Hurry, Barry! Hold on. Stop, I'll, uh, I'll, stop calmly knocking. I'll say what I'm going to say after we get to the absolute greatest line in this franchise's history. And I love this bit when he looks like, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Come on. And she's just standing there. Honestly, it's weird for me. I can imagine that instance, instead of using his own foot, Barry would just use his own goddamn magnum just to blow the door down. He would. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. But I'm not. Resident Evil is filmed in front of a live studio zombie, and he's just there like. Do 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 it's the stinger music, but it keeps on going lower and lower and lower and lower. Like, do 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 And it just goes to... Anyway, I was going to say that. And the last thing I could have said about that door situation was that, you say that, James, I almost thought Bear's like, hang on, I got this. And he just punches a hole in the door and opens it from the other side. Like, yeah. See? Yeah, it was a pole door, Jill. You had all the way... You had the wrong way around. Anyway. Oh, shoot this board sounding zombie. <laughs> yeah, shoot the board sounding zombie. Anyway. Oh, yeah, a quick tip for those that are going to be playing this for the first time you'll know when a zombie is dead when there's blood splatter on the floor. Yep, otherwise, knife him. And also, here's a tip if you are playing the remake, burn them. Burn them or shoot their heads off. Yep. Oh, boy. But don't you have limited matches? Fresh. Yes, uh, so burn, just shoot their heads off, blow up their heads. God damn it. Like that. Uh, unfortunately, Jill doesn't get that that luxury with the handgun. She can with the shotgun, though. Yeah, that's actually no. I but, was able to blow hmm? a couple heads off with the handgun. Uh, if you then it feels random then with the auto aim. It kind of is. It's much rarer to do with Jill than it is with Chris. Chris honestly has it a much as a much easier when it comes to head popping. Fair, fair. Uh, how's about you, Logan? What are your histories with the R and the E? Freaking crows heckling my life. Seriously, it just fake. Nevermore will they give you a moment of peace. Yeah. They just won't stop telling me to get off the laptop and get a job. Nevermore! Nevermore! Fine. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first puzzle we'll be tackling in this year DS port. What we have here is a whole row of paintings that show off a bunch of... It will actually shows the same guy throughout it throughout the ages. Like you'll see him as an infant, and then you'll see oh. him as a decrepit old fuck. You want to put you want to actually uh, there's <laughs> there's switches below them that you want to push in the order from youngest <laughs> to most dead. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. What's, What's up? So funny? I don't know why I just love you going from an infant to a decrepit old fuck. <laughs> I mean that's how life works. We start yeah. off as inexperienced youngins to too experienced, decrepit. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, by the way, for those of you that decide to say screw off to the classic version and go for the remake, just know that this puzzle is not the same in that version compared to here. Oh. Yeah. No. The again, the remake changes a lot of stuff, but uh, like they add an entire. The remake outright screws with veterans. Oh yeah. No, definitely. But that's also why it's lauded as such a classic because it's a good. It it, 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 it tilts things on its head. Yeah. So, but anyway. Uh, uh, so back to back to my thing about how I was experienced with this series moving forward is that really quick. I, I do uh -huh. apologize. Uh, if you do like pick the wrong painting, the crows will attack you. And by God, they are the worst fucking enemies in the game. Worse than the hunters. Worse than the zombies. Worse than the dogs. Because with those things, they at least have generally sized hitboxes. These things don't have the hitbox the size of a gnat. I mean, by that point, you may as well just run away from them. Yeah. <laughs> basically. So basically, it's it's Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds all over again. Yeah, I know the I know the the uh, the novel adaptation of Resident Evil tried to justify that that those rods that they're standing on have this sort have can be triggered to uh, shock them if the if you get the puzzle wrong. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, uh, you're saying you're saying Logan. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I forgot now. Uh, I was you were saying talking about your history with Ari. Yes, that's it. So I primarily uh, I primarily experienced watching uh, someone else play Resident Evil Four, and then I decide to like look up footage of Resident Evil 2 on the old N64 and uh it was a trip uh then I'll admit for a long time a lot of my exposure was from the movies 
and unfortunately not in the best sense. Actually, if I could like rewind real Aww, that dog if I can just... rewind real quick, I didn't know RE2 was on the N64. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a Nintendo 64 port that admittedly graphically in the gameplay uh, section looked better, but the N64 didn't support full motion video, so you lost yeah. a lot of the story. Right. At this, at this, it's funny you say that though, that because they did try their damnedest to put in a good most, if not all, of the FMVs on that version. It's just yeah. a, they're just a lot more compressed. Well, <laughs> not all of them. They did a couple of them. They had to turn into like still screens. It was but regardless, so that so that's how it mainly started for me, and I've been more or less um, from that point forward. Uh, a lot of my exposure to the Resident Evil series is going to be kind of going into it new, like, but I want, but I want to experience this. Like, this feels like this is history. This game has, this franchise has clearly established a place for itself in gaming's history, and I think that mm -hmm. it's uh, worth looking into. And um, that's about it. Uh, and in between James and more, 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 more. Predominantly between uh, Matt and I, we're going to be, I guess, sharing the burden and or joy of showing off the series for the channel. Mm -hmm. Like, like for example, I'll primarily do what I can with the classic trilogy, and I'm just going to say this right now. Do not be surprised if I find the means to cheat in them, but only because I just want to show. Them. Again, I'm not a pro at these. I, if I if I know I can do it, I'll get I'll do my damnedest. But I just want to do it for the sake of the experience. Right. Also, I I like the joke that you had in mind, Logan. Where when you're at one of these things, you just see like Barry like huddled in there. But what I had in mind is that like the face he would make is that that same devil damn face that he made in the Jill Sandwich comics. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um. But no. Uh. Thanks, JMZ. JMV. Yeah, I, I gotta get back to finishing that. I'm sorry, by the way. Just like It's been years since we tried doing that project. I am going to actually finish it, I promise. It's just, life is fucked. Life is fucked. Um, uh, trust me, I have like I have like three projects that I'm still in the middle of working on, so you're fine. Yeah, uh, I, might, I might beg you guys for help with that, honestly. But no, um... So, so, uh, another thing, so yeah, Logan and I are, James is going to show off the, cra the classic trilogy, Logan and I are going to show off, uh, more of the remakes and modern games. Oh, and, uh, real quick, that save file there is pretty much definitive proof that I did, you know, beat this game once legitimately. Yep. So I have total, so I have total, you know, I can at least say that I did that much. Mm hmm That's good, at least. Uh, but no, uh, Logan and I are going to show off most of the games, and... Uh, Resident Evil 5 and 6, we are going to do co-op, because uh, with most of the games, we can beat it on our own. With Resident Evil 5 and it's kind of 6, but mostly 5, you cannot beat that fucking game on your own. The AI is way too fucking stupid. You be confident? <laughs> well, if it's right. stupid, then you really shouldn't need the extra help. No, like, it's no, no. Thing. Here's the thing. You take a lot of damage in that game, Steve. So much damage. If you even have like a fingernail's worth of damage and you accidentally give one of your healing items to uh, the AI, they will immediately heal you. Thank you, pass me. Like, there's no strategy with it. But yeah. Well, just uh, when you said the AI, I thought you meant the enemy AI. No, but yeah, no, 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 ma no. But yeah, no matter. The other thing that's worth noting, since again, a lot of this first part is just establishing the foundation of where this commentary and this channel is. Oh, yeah, now we're going to go straight into stupid territory after this. Oh, obviously. Is that what we're going to be doing? Is that we have we have our plan to kind of cover the story of some of the spin-offs, but as far as like the main numbered games, um, it is it should be worth noting that you know Capcom for their to their credit did create some really nice remakes of the original trilogy. At least you know they look pretty, very nice, touched up. More and I'm not going to talk about it now, just because if we get into that conversation now, we're going to go way, well, way over time, and there, and the next part's a lot longer, and thus we can tackle that then. As far as what that means for this channel, we are going to be tackling... Well, for 2 and 3, we're going to be doing both the original and the remakes, and for this one, James and I are kind of doing a hybrid of sorts. Yeah, because with this, with this game, it... They don't quite do the same sort of, um, like, varied scenario shit like RE2 did. So I would say it's, we have a little more leeway with just me doing the classic 
ver version with Jill and uh, Logan doing remake with Chris. Even though I will promise you this much, I do have a bonus part uh, ready for uh, Deadly Silence that does show off, you know, what Chris goes through, just for the sake of it. And I, and in turn, I'll have to, I'll figure something out to show off what Jill cutscenes and stuff would have happened in the Jill remake. Yeah, it's only fair. That said, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you all next time for Resident Evil Deadly Silence. And so I can interview Chris, uh, Chris, Matt, as Chris, on his opinion <laughs> of Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake. Because we have simple white names, Logan. Hello, darkness, my old friend. What she said. <laughs>